This video is called The Grand Convention, and in this video we'll be looking at the who, what, when, where, why, and how of what's known as the Grand Convention or the Constitutional Convention, and we'll be looking at just the specifics of what happened at this famous historical event. So let's take a closer look. So first of all, the what. Um, you might be wondering, what is a convention exactly? Well, convention very simply is just another word for a large meeting or gathering for a specific purpose. We have a convention center in Hartford, and as you can imagine, at the convention center they host different meetings. Um, they have like a lot of trade shows there. You can go, um, sometimes it'd be like a boat show, and everyone that's interested in boats goes to the convention center to look at boats. So it's a, kind of like a large meeting. Um, in this particular meeting, it wasn't to sell boats, but it was to rewrite the Constitution or to change the government. Um, at this meeting were people called delegates, and delegates are um, basically the same thing as representatives. They were chosen by their state to represent their state at the meeting. And I'm going to zoom back out here to show you this picture one more time. This is a picture of the Constitutional Convention or the Grand Convention or the Philadelphia Convention. It has actually three names. They all refer to the same thing. And at this picture you see all the delegates here in the room and they are here for about four months and they talk about and they write the Constitution. I'm going to go back through all these things again. There we go. So now we're on to the where. The where is in Philadelphia. The convention takes place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, the same place, Independence Hall here, where the Declaration of Independence was written. So you might be wondering, why Philadelphia? Well, um, Philadelphia during the 1790s was the capital of the nation. You might not know that, that Washington, D.C. wasn't always the capital. Washington, D.C. wasn't even built yet. It wasn't even thought of yet, actually, in 1787. Um, and if you also think about the geography of the region, there's 13 states, and Philadelphia is kind of in the middle of them all. So it provided a central location so that travel was easier. And of course, we all think of Philadelphia today, we think of delicious Philly cheesesteak sandwiches, but this is actually the building where the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence were both written. On to the when. When did this event take place? It took place May 14th through September 17th of the year 1787. So it did take the delegates a long time. They were in Philadelphia for a long time doing this work. Um, if you think about the year 1787, at that point in time, the Articles of Confederation had been around for six years. So that government was failing. And by six years into the government, we knew it wasn't going to work. Um, Shays' Rebellion, another important event that you just learned about, had just happened um, toward the end of 1786 uh, into the beginning of 1787. So it wasn't even just a few months after Shays' Rebellion occurred. So if you look back at the picture here, oops, one too far. Here's a Shays' Rebellion picture from the video you watched, but that was well on the minds of the people that were at the convention. So on to the why. The original purpose of this convention was not to write a new government, which is what they ended up doing, but just to fix the existing government, the Articles of Confederation. The only thing that the people here at this convention were supposed to do was fix the Articles of Confederation. But the plan changed, and they didn't actually get the proper authority to do so. When they started talking about how to fix the government, they realized that the Articles of Confederation were so bad, they could not be fixed, and they actually needed to create a new government. And the reason no one really protested this is because the Articles of Confederation were so bad, and Shays' Rebellion had just happened, that people were pretty much all on board um, to fixing uh, to changing the government and not fixing it. And I'll show you my picture here for this slide. Um, one of the things they're going to do is allow the government to tax, because that was one of the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. Now we're moving on. How? How would this happen? How would this, these 55 people write a new government? Well, the first thing that's important was secrecy. These meetings were going to be top secret. Um, they closed the shades. Everyone take an oath of secrecy. No one would ever talk about what happened inside the meetings so that people could debate without worrying about being judged by the outside. So everything that went on in the meeting is top secret. James Madison took notes, and he published those notes well after the, after the meeting um, was over. So that's how we know what happened inside the meeting now. But back then, not even the newspapers would report on what was happening because nobody knew. So free debate was, was encouraged. Each state at the convention got one vote. So in order for something to happen, you needed two-thirds of a majority to pass an idea. So there were, there were 12 states there, so you needed about nine states to vote in favor of something to pass it. And then there's going to be long, fierce debate um, 
that's going to happen at this convention. People are going to argue with each other over lots of different things, as you'll see in the next video, um, until either someone gives in or someone compromises on an issue. So finally, I think, we'll talk about who is there. Um, you see a picture of George Washington here. He was um, probably the most famous person there. But overall, there were 55 men from 12 of the 13 states. Rhode Island did not send any delegates because they boycotted it. They did not want to change the Articles of Confederation. Rhode Island actually was the only place where things were good under the Articles of Confederation. Um, the key people that you might have heard of before that were in attendance, George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, Ben Franklin, all people you've probably heard of before, um, they were all in attendance at the convention. Some people that you may have expected to be there that weren't, Thomas Jefferson, the guy who wrote the Declaration of Independence, who will become our third pre president, he was not there. He was actually in France working as the uh, minister to France. John Adams, who will become the second president, he was in England working as the minister to England. So they were both overseas, probably would have been there had they been in the country, but they were not. Another famous American, Patrick Henry, um, who was famous in the Revolutionary War, he was not there. He was also boycotting at Lake Rhode Island. Um, he did not like the idea of changing the government. You might be wondering who represented Connecticut at the Constitutional Convention. Roger Sherman and Oliver Ellsworth were the only two delegates that Connecticut sent. And I put a little picture of Roger Sherman here because he is going to become extremely, extremely important in what happens at the Constitutional Convention. He's probably, out of all the people there, the most important um, person, even though you've probably never heard of him before. He does a lot of good work at this convention and actually saves the convention from disaster. Okay, so that is the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the Constitutional Convention. You learn that it took place in Philadelphia. It happened in 1787. 55 people from 12 of the 13 states went there. They all get sworn to secrecy. They have to figure out a way to make this new government work. Um, it takes them a long time. And over the next couple of videos, we're going to be showing you the debates that they had at this convention.